Happy spring and welcome to Fur of Fins and Feathers. Today our guest, we have some rabbits. Today, and today our guest is Kim Botello, a Swansea resident and renowned breeder of rabbits. Kim, welcome to Fur of Fins and Feathers. Hi. What, are you, what did you bring with us today? Um, I brought three different uh, breeds of rabbits here today just to show you some different breeds. Each breed, ha they have different hair types. So this is a wool breed and this is a Jersey Wooly. So it's a little miniature breed. This is Root Beer and he is about um, three years old. So he was my daughter's um, showmanship rabbit in 4-H and I'll talk a little bit about 4-H too. Um, but this is, a, like I said, it's a wool breed. They don't have long enough wool that you could spin, but there's different types of rabbit fur. There's wool, there's rex, there's normal fur. Um, but this is a great little breed for kids. Um, even though they have wool, they don't tend to get very, very knotted. They come in lots of different colors. Um, I have a thing for blue eyes, so I like the blue-eyed whites. Sometimes you see white rabbits with red eyes. These guys have blue. Uh, but they come in a broken pattern, which they can have color um, with the white. And then if you show in the American Rabbit Breeders Association, a rabbit has to have particular markings for it to not be disqualified from a show. So, Before we even start mm -hmm. and, and get into the, and this is fascinating, tell us about how did you get interested in rabbits? So I've always loved animals since I was a kid. Um, I've always had animals. My dad would bring us home rabbits when we were kids. Uh, once I was a teenager, I actually worked at a pet store. Uh, so obviously I would take home lots of animals. Um, and that just continued throughout my whole life. Um, then when I had, uh, I have a son and a daughter. My daughter loved animals like me. Excuse me. Um, so once she was about 10 years old, we, we got into 4-H. I didn't know about 4-H as a kid in Swansea, um, but that's kind of what started this whole thing with rabbits. I told her she could get one rabbit, and we now have like 30 rabbits. So they're great little pets, um, and it teaches kids a lot of responsibility. It keeps them focused, um, and it's fun breeding them in and trying to get the type that each different breed is supposed to have. So you do learn a lot about genetics and whatnot. This is fascinating. Uh, and your daughter went on to work in the animal sciences. She's working at Brown University, yep, right now. Um, she works with the lab animals and she'll be continuing on to school and she wants to stay within the animal field. She's not quite sure yet exactly what that is, but um, she still enjoys it as much as I do. Can you bef explain for people? Mm -hmm. When I go out in the backyard and see rabbits running around the backyard, what is the difference? So they're technically like a different species of rabbit. Um, they can't crossbreed. You can't crossbreed a domestic rabbit. They're, they were Rabbits were brought here, the domestic rabbits were brought here from, I believe, Europe. Um, so the ones that are here is a lagomorph, and they just, they can't crossbreed. So uh, people over the years, just like with dogs, have made different varieties, breeding different size and types and colors of rabbits to get different breeds. So they're, they're, they wouldn't be able to survive out in the wild. So they are really, I guess they're called really hares. The ones in the wild would be more like a hare, yeah, than, than these guys here. We do have breeds that look similar to a hare. Uh, one of the breeds I have here is an arch breed, so they're very up high, um, but it's not the same, you know, uh, species of animal. You have 30, about 30 uh, yep. different? <laughs> 30 rabbits. We, 30 we, rabbits. We raise, um, we raise Jersey Woolies, um, we raise Tans, we raise Holland Lops. Um, I have some Florida Whites, and I only have one Velveteen Lop yet left, so she's here today too. But I'm, I'm slowly getting out of the Velveteen Lops. Concentrating more on these smaller rabbits um, that are easier for kids to handle with 4-H with and stuff. Tell us about your work with 4-H. So um, I've been a leader in 4-H now. It's going on about six years. Um, my daughter is aged out of 4-H, but I'm continuing on. Um, I've 
taken on some younger kids now and I like to get my group a little bit bigger um, and we we meet at um, Tractor Supply um, in, when it's, Swansea. in Swansea when it's cold or rainy out that's where we meet otherwise we meet at my farm I have a big rabbit barn it's a 20 by 12 rabbit barn uh, so we meet in there and then we learn about the care hands a lot of hands-on but there's also you know some book learning stuff too uh, but you gotta the kids uh, can show their rabbits once the summertime comes there's lots of fairs people can go to fairs um, and see the different types of animal shows that are there. It helps, you know, get people into seeing what 4-H is all about. Um, so the kids get a project animal. Um, the thing about being in 4-H is you have to have an animal, but not necessarily. If a kid wants to show a cow, they can lease a cow from somebody else. But something like a rabbit, small, you can keep at home. Um, or you can even show uh, guinea pigs, which they call cavies. Um, and so the kid, all the kids in my club have a rabbit. They, I've made them little charts where they can, they have to bring their charts to me so we can make sure they're taking care of their rabbits. And then during the meeting, they learn about showmanship. So the kids have to be able to flip their rabbits over. They have to uh, be able to, you know, check their teeth and examine the rabbit to make sure it's healthy. Um, so that teaches the rabbit to, as the kid's learning, the rabbit learns to trust the child. Um, and, and gets comfortable with it. So that makes it, these really good pets. If you're ever looking for a pet rabbit, get it from a 4-H child because they've been handling them forever. So, I mean, we touch our babies as soon as they're born. And some people say not to do that, but it's okay to do it. <laughs> this is a good hobby. Yes, it's a very fun hobby. It's addictive, to... but... <laughs> but it's, it looks better than having a child stick with the internet and just sit correct at a computer terminal yes correct <laughs> it teaches them a lot of responsibility and when my daughter was you know in her teenage years she couldn't just go off for the weekend and you know spend time she had to plan out who was going to take care of her animals if she wanted to you know sleep at a friend's house or something like that it's it's responsibility it teaches them responsibility the kids also keep financial records um, in 4-H, they, they pr give, uh, send those in at the end of the year and they get recognition for, they don't have to, but it's something we like them to do because my daughter actually used those 4-H records to help herself get into Bristol Aggie. It's helped her get jobs because you can see that the child, you know, has keeping track of everything from the, the maintenance of the animal, what they've spent on it, any income. The kids win cash money at some of these shows. Um, when they when they do showmanship and fitting with so the there animals. are many many benefits. Oh, definitely, definitely. Talk about root beer's care. So, or root, do you want to do you want to bring out another? Yeah, one I mean we can us? we can, can take out another one. So again, this is a Jersey Wooly. He looks he reminds me a little bit of like a little Persian with his little pushed in nose, and he's a wool breed. Did you breed him? Oh, he had yeah. I have a bunch of his daughters. <laughs> Now, who else do we have today? This one is a Velveteen Lop. This is a rabbit that is not right now recognized by Arba. It's a breed that um, people are trying to pass to get recognized as an Arba breed. Um, so what they, is Arba? So Arba is the American Rabbit Breeders Association. Just like AKC with dogs, people show rabbits in a big rabbit show. Um, so there's, you know, different, people will work on different varieties, meaning like colors of breeds that are already recognized, or some people will try to come up with a whole new breed. When they come up with a whole new breed, they have to have a, a standard of perfection to, you know, give to the, to the judges that what these rabbits are supposed to look like. Like some rabbits have to have a certain ear length, um, which these guys from tip to tip would be 15 inches. Um, this type of rabbit also has Rex fur. If you want to feel her, she feels almost like a, like a chinchilla. Oh, what a soft So it's coat. very short, dense, short coat. So there's only a few breeds that have the Rex fur. There's um, the Rex, the Mini Rex, um, the Velveteen Lop, and some people have made a Plush Lop, which is a smaller version of this. So it's more like a miniature breed. Um, 
So I started getting into these rabbits when I was bringing my daughter to rabbit shows and she was showing her Jersey Woolies and Tans. I wanted a breed for myself because I we travel to Pennsylvania every year with my 4-H club. Um, I brought my daughter to national shows in um, South Carolina. We would go to Ohio to a lot of shows. 4-H can be as big or as little as you want it to be. You can just attend meetings, go to some local shows, or this is something you can do nationally as well. Um, so she, this girl, she's about three years old now. Um, and the reason why I'm getting out of them myself is it's, it's not a breed that they've actually got the type right on. It's, um, so while they're really, really sweet, sweet pets, it's just been a hard breed to get the type of what they want it to be. Some people are concentrating too much on the ears. Other people are, you know, concentrating on the fur. So you're not going to continue with this breed. So I'm not going to continue breed. with this breed, but I will keep her. You know what I mean? As a pet, and she comes to petting zoos and stuff like that with us, and the 4-H kids can, can play with her and stuff. And learn from her. And learn. And, and I like to have the rabbits with the different fur types because... People don't realize that rabbits come in different fur types. Some people who are allergic to rabbits, they think they're allergic to rabbits. They may not be allergic to Rex fur. They may not be allergic to wool. They may only be allergic to normal fur. So if someone, you know, thinks they might want a rabbit and thinks they're allergic, they should get around a Rex rabbit. They might not have an allergy to it. Okay. <clears throat> They're not hypoallergenic, but everyone's allergies are Can different. Can you talk about the rabbits? Uh, care and grooming so and feeding so for feed um i in the winter time we have to water them twice a day obviously because their water water freezes my rabbit barn is not heated rabbits prefer cold over heat where a lot of people think they can't live outside year round they can live outside year round as long as they have a draft free area um they could also live indoors all the time, but the only thing about that, when a kid's in 4-H, if they have a rabbit indoors in air conditioning and they want to go to a show that's outside in the summer heat, that rabbit's not going to do too well. Um, so in the summertime, I run fans in my barn just to help keep the, you know, the air circulating because, like I said, they like, they like cold more than heat. You can put frozen water bottles for them to lay up against. Um, I feed my rabbits once a day. They, depending on the breed of rabbit, this girl here will get about a half a cup per day, where the smaller breeds will get about a quarter cup. They also get hay, and then we give them treats like carrots, Cheerios. Um, you can give them oats. Oats is a good transition breed. What about veterinary care? Veterinary care, I mean, pretty much they're not a, an animal that needs shots yearly or anything like that. So I guess it veterinary care if you have some type of emergency you can't take care of yourself but pretty much a rabbit is a pretty hardy animal so it's not something some people do like to take them for a yearly exam and that's okay but it's not something that's required um and then as a rabbit breeder i've learned a lot of things on my own you know if, if something does arise how to take care of it when you're trimming nails you could sometimes trim a nail too short it can bleed but that's something simple you can take care of um, so they, their nails have to be trimmed. Yeah, so their nails have to be trimmed. A so lot their of these teeth need to be. Uh, so rabbits' teeth for their whole life continuously grow, and their front, the top teeth and the bottom teeth rub together like this. That's why it's important for them to have a hard feed. They can chew on hard wood. Um, the hay also helps keep their teeth going. If a rabbit, for some reason, chips a tooth, they can get what's called a malclusion where if the top tooth broke, that bottom tooth's not going to rub on it properly, so it can overgrow. A rabbit can have their teeth snipped, which if you're not an experienced person, that's something that you may want to take them to the vet for or an experienced um, rabbit breeder. Um, so if you can get those teeth, I've even, like, we've had a rabbit break a tooth, file it even so that they can rub together the right way. Some rabbits, if they don't have good genetics, could be born with a malocclusion where their their bite's just not right, so it doesn't rub properly. Yeah. So that's a rabbit that for its entire life you'd have to monitor teeth, you'd have to take it for its teeth to be clipped. So that's a rabbit that could require, you know, care because it's just something was a little off with it. 
Um, cleaning the ears, they're pretty much, they're, rabbits are very clean. A lot of rabbits will pick, you know, like one corner of their cage to go to the bathroom in. But they usually don't have any problems with their ears either. They can get ear mites like any other animal. If they do, there's medications you can use to get rid of ear mites. They don't seem to, fleas don't seem to really bother them, but some people have gotten fleas with rabbits. And depending on the rabbit, just brushing them. Um, How some, do you brush them? So depending on what type of rabbit you have, if you have a show rabbit, you don't want to overbrush because then you're going to loosen up some of that nice density because this breed, they look at the density of the rabbit. Um, so you can use, I like to use a comb with the wool breed, so if there is mats in there, you can get those mats out. This girl here, some, um, she doesn't really require too, too much grooming before a show. Some people might just take like some, a little water just to make her not like staticky or something like that. Um, but when they do molt out, they will lose a lot more fur. You'll notice it in the cage. So the cage will be a little harder to clean for those couple of weeks when they're molting. And that's like in the, when the season's changing from, you know, right now as the season's going to get warmer, they're going to start to shed out their winter coat. Um, so, I mean, trimming their nails, it depends on the rabbit every few weeks, three or four weeks or so. Just going over the rabbit, making sure it doesn't have ear mites. Um, flipping the rabbit over, checking its feet to make sure. If a rabbit's on a wire cage all the time, they can get something called sawhawks. That will usually happen if their nails are kept long, because then it makes their their foot set back, almost like they got like a reverse like high heel on, so the back of their foot rubs. If that happens, you'd notice a little sore, you would just take care of that, put some you know antibiotic ointment or something on that. But for the most part, they're a pretty easy animal to take care of. You'd clean their cage. Um, I clean my rabbits once a week. I pull all their trays out. I scrub all the wire. Um, in the summertime, when, in the springtime, I should say, when it's heading towards summer, I'll bring all my cages outside, and I take a blowtorch to burn all that loose fur off of them. Um, Excuse me. So that, that helps make cleaning of the cage easier. But rabbits, another important thing is for them to have hay because rabbits need hay to keep their gut working. Their, their digestive tract is very similar to that of a horse. They need that fiber and whatnot to keep their, tra their digestive tract working properly. If they don't have that, they can get wool block. So and some serious issues. Yeah, you'll, you'll see their poops would get like stuck together if they, with the hair if they're getting wool block. So giving them hay all the time, um, they can have a little bit of pineapple is really good, or papaya helps rid wool block, so that's a nice little treat to give to them. And they like pineapple, they don't do. they? They do. Like the, they like the, uh, the acid, I guess, taste in there. Um, oranges too, but pineapple in particular is, helps really with wool block. Who um, is our third character over there? And then our third one, this was my daughter's um, breed that she... We went to uh, North Carolina Nationals with this breed. These remind me of a, um, a Doberman Pinscher with their coloring. This one's a little more active because it's a, it's a fully arched breed. It's hard to show you f him sitting here. But they judge these guys on how they run up and down the table, so they're a running breed. So not that these rabbits aren't friendly, but they're a more hyper breed. They're very, very active. Like the Jersey Woolly and the Velveteen Lop will just sit in my lap and just cuddle all day where this guy's personality is to be more curious, um, to look around, see what's going on. But he say, is it a male? This is a male, yeah. Very, very handsome. Yeah, he is. They have a nice, nice sheen to their coat. Um, and the coloration is, is just beautiful. So my daughter, my daughter fell in love with these. Her first one she had, he actually just passed this past year. This is one of his sons was, his name was Rascal and he lived a long time, but we have a few of his sons left to just carry on her line. So, and she did really, really well with her tans. How much does a rabbit cost? It's hard to, so, figure out, but because uh, they're all right, different breeds, different must breeds, have different prices. Just like dogs, different breeds cost different prices. Also, depending on who you're buying a rabbit from. Again, uh, f to buy a rabbit from a 4-H'er, 
you're gonna get a nice rabbit at a probably a better price than an adult person who has champion rabbits. Everyone has to start somewhere when they get rabbits. When we first got rabbits, we started with the Jersey Woolies. Um, my daughter, we just got the best rabbit we could afford, which on the show table was, didn't do the best, but it was what we could afford. So you could get like a $20, $30 rabbit. It took her several years of breeding. You pick you know, a buck to complement a doe to make offspring, and then you show those offspring and you see what the judges say. So my, my best rabbit could be you know, someone else's worst rabbit. Um, but the kids learn all about, you know, what, what, what they need to breed this guy with. You know, he might be a little narrow in his hindquarters, so you need to find a doe who's fuller in her hindquarters. So you can see how it works once you breed them, if it, if it evens things out, and the, usually the offspring place better, you know what I mean, in the shows than, than the uh, parents do. So it's very much like dogs. Right, right. So... I mean, you learn, and you learn your line of rabbits, what works, what doesn't work. You could take two of the top breeders, buy a rabbit from both, breed them, and then not even end up with that great of a rabbit just because those two lines don't go well together. Um, I know you're a cutie, huh? So these guys are very inquisitive. It's a, called a tan, and they come in like a chocolate and red, like a Doberman. They come in a blue and the blue and the tan, and they come in, they call it lilac, um, which kind of reminds me of almost a fawn color in dogs, the fawn and the tan. Yeah. So, but so these- So how can people, owners, I, I mean, uh, not owners, but uh, how can people uh, learn about rabbits, more about maybe the rabbit club? Yeah, so, um, there's a, there are a lot of arbor shows throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island. If you go look on online, uh, you can find the shows. Um, and learning about rabbits, truly, I've learned. I thought I knew a lot about rabbits going into this with my daughter, but as a leader, learning through other breeders and stuff, just how how much there there's you're always learning no matter what. Um, different techniques of different things you can do with your rabbits. As even with care, like you just learn different different things that work, um, and different even grooming techniques with different rabbits. Um, so I, I, if anyone has a chance this summer, just go to a like some kind of fair and just check out. There are what these a lot of local doing. fairs, like yeah. the, the Westport Fair. Westport Fair is one that's in Rochester. Um, uh, I'm trying to get a rabbit and goat show possibly at like the Rehoboth Breed Expo this year. Just like a f little 4-H show just to get that going. There, there used to be years ago a lot more stuff in Rehoboth than there is now. 4-H numbers have declined. We're hoping to get the numbers to grow. Because and why it, is that? I think there's maybe not enough information about it out there. I think people are, some people are nervous to try new things. To have a 4-H club, you only need three families and five children. Um, and you can start your own club. I've told many people and I've helped a few people start clubs. It's not, you learn as you go, you know what I mean? You don't, and you can have as little as one meeting per month or you can meet every week. It doesn't have to be, it can be whatever you make it. 4-H isn't just about animals as it's, they have, you can do robotics, woodworking, beekeeping. They even have like a babysitting one. Um, if you look on the 4-H website, they'll show you like all the different types of clubs you can have. Um, and, and the kids can be from ages five to 18. So you can have a five-year-old in, in your club and an 18-year-old. It's one of the only organizations that have all the kids grouped together like that. And if you don't wanna have that, you know, wide span of age, you can make your club whatever you want it to be. Um, when I, when my daughter was younger, we had kids from five to like 16 in the club for, and it, and it worked well because you have the older kids teaching the younger kids. So it's fun. Your daughter did very well at Bristol Aggie. She did. She did very well there. And she knew a lot of stuff going in being in the 4-H program. And they have FFA at um, Bristol Aggie too, so that helps. With the FFA, you learn about, you know, different things. The Future Farmers the future of America. The Future Farmers of America. Yeah, being in 4-H helps them. Uh, they do visual presentations every year in 4-H, in and they do a lot of that with the FFA as well. 
So we have five-year-olds who get up in front of a classroom of um, a classroom of people, and they're judged on. They can do their presentation on anything. It doesn't have to be their project animal. Um, so it could be on duct tape. There was one kid that did one on duct tape, and they they just talk all about duct tape for like three minutes, and the judges will, will ask them questions and whatnot. Um, but it teaches. It's hard to speak in a room full of people. That's that's something I never did when I was younger. Like you could speak to your class, but like to speak to a bunch of strangers is much different. It's very very interesting. I know I have gone, I have judged as a dog judge. I have gone to many 4-H shows for the dog and should it, the fitting and uh, excuse me the fitting and so much yeah, yeah. part. And they've done wonderful, wonderful work. Oh it's yeah, great. the kids the kids take so much pride in the work of their animals and cleaning them and getting them ready. And I'm ready to take him home. <laughs> these they they do have quite a little personality. These tans, but he's he's got the normal normal fur, and he's got fly. Oh, that's another thing the kids learn. They rabbits can have fly back or roll back fur, and he's got fly back because you see how it flies back really quick. Now, what is the, his longevity? Um, some rabbits, I usually tell people that they live about seven years or so, but I've had people come back and tell us that they've had rabbits live till they're like 13 years old. So on average, I'd say about five to seven years. Now he lives in the barn. All he lives in my rabbit barn. Yep. They each all have their own individual cage. Um, the does have a little bit bigger of a cage than the bucks. Cause you know, when you put the nest okay. box in for the, with the babies and whatnot, and then as the babies get older, we'll put the babies in different cages. Now, when uh, the females, how they have a, is it called a litter? Yeah, they, it's called, yeah, it's a litter of babies, and they're called kits, baby. And how many kits are there So in it a depends litter? on the, the breed of rabbit. Like a tan typically will have maybe four to six. Um, the Jersey Woolies, they might have, sometimes they only have one, but it's usually like two or three. Sometimes you might have a mom who's a bigger, they call it a brood doe, she's a bigger mom, um, and you use her for breeding because she pops out like six babies, you know. Sometimes some of those little tiny petite ones, they just only have a couple. Um, and then larger rabbits, um, my velveteen lop, her mom, I, I have never bred her, but her mom had, um, it was 12 babies. So the larger the breed, the more babies that they have. Well, this has been fascinating, Kim. I thank you for coming. We're going to have you back. Kim is also very interested in goats and has wonderful, beautiful goats that she's going to share in a future show. Thank you for joining us today on Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Thank you.